Hey, yo, it's your boy Ancient Albatross here behind the scenes because uh, we have a special guest. But that aside, thank you for coming. As usual, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us here on Twitch or subscribe to us over on YouTube. It is a great help to our channel. We really appreciate it. And without further ado, Dean, what are we doing here tonight? Oh, LA, as usual, it's uh, interview night, and it's awesome. We have the amazing Kate Evans from across the pond. She decided to stay up late just to come and hang out with us, so we really appreciate that. Amazing, she brings an amazing background to her new role as the uh, community director for marketing manager. Marketing manager. Marketing manager. I'm sorry, I got the wrong title. Marketing manager for MCG. Um, she brings a biology degree, a PhD. I mean, her marketing roles with the largest game conventions in the UK, UK Games Expo. She just brings a professionality unheard of to MCG. But more than that, she brings this beautiful, wonderful, enlightening, and just ultimately welcoming personality. A great addition to MCG. I mean, I can't say enough about how awesome Kate is. So without further ado, Kate, would you please tell the CU family hello and, you know, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's absolutely lovely to be here. And um, it's three o'clock in the morning. I've had coffee. It has been decaf. So I'm going to try and, you know, keep it at a six. But if it goes up to 11, this is why. <laughs> this is amazing to be here. And hello, everyone. Kate, 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 welcome to the CU. It's your first time. Has it been from lack of trying on my part? Kate knows behind the scenes. I've been begging for a long time. I'm so happy that you stood back. And thank you so much. I know it's so late and so out of your way. That just shows how gracious you are and how wonderful a person you are to, you know, to stay up late and chat with us and chat with our audience. We all really appreciate it. You guys are amazing to hang out with. I absolutely love that I've managed to meet at least two out of the three of you this year. And um, yeah, absolutely brilliant, brilliant to talk to and hang out with. Thank you. With that said, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your gaming experience? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, I uh, very happy been a massive nerd for most of my existence. Uh, and this is down to my dad, who um, used to have little Hopolite and Grecian armies, and we used to paint the figures badly. Um, and he used to paint them quite well, and he used to play, got us into Star Trek and things, and Doctor Who when we were kids. Um, and then my, uh, my oldest friend, uh, we have been friends for 41 years, came around one day and said, I've got this game my uncle ran for us. Do you want to try it? And so my brother and I and uh, my best friend from just up the road, we all sat down and we played um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition. And we did not know what we were doing because we were like seven or eight. <laughs> and it was just amazing. But it was that first step of, oh, my goodness, this is like having film and TV and story of your own. This is wicked. How do we do more of this? So, yes, that was some considerable time ago. And, um, yeah, did Gen Cons in the UK, did uh, manage to do Gen Con in America, uh, which was amazing. First time in America at 19. That was extraordinary. Everything is just bigger, more awesome. And it's interesting doing a lot of trips to America now. It's very much like the Wizard of Oz where America is Oz. Everything is bigger, brighter, the colours are there, you get this huge 3D kind of film and, and kind of feel to it. And then you come back to the UK, which is very pretty, but it's very small and it's titchy and tiny and it feels a lot more like being in a, uh, a BBC TV show, <laughs> which, which is still ace, but it's not, it's not the Chocolate Factory or it's not like Oz, right? <laughs> so yeah, very cool. Oh. So UK is Kansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> Although we've got rain at the moment instead of wind. <laughs> so yeah, well, I like that. It's pretty good. That's I should awesome. get a little dog too. <laughs> right here. Before, before you ask a question, right. chat like in all our interviews, if you have a uh, question you want to ask for Kate, she's grace enough to, after all questions, she's definitely going to try to answer as many 
um, chat questions. Just preface it with the word question so Al could cut and paste it onto our, our notes and we'll definitely ask your questions. And thank you so much for everyone wanting to ask questions. We'll definitely add them in there. Absolutely. So, as that being said, Anthony, you know, asked a great question. Thank you for letting us know all about you. And just so you know, Kate's even more impressive than just that little blurb she gave us. She's really a great person <laughs> to hang out with. It's a lot of fun. But with that being said, how do you like your role as Monty Cook's Games Marketing Manager? And how did you manage I, to get your current gig with them? I absolutely love this. This is the best job ever. Um, the, uh, the company I was working, I was working for an agency before this, and they were lovely, absolutely lovely people, majorly supportive. Um, and when I told them what I was going to do, they were like, oh, yeah, you, you should go and do that. <laughs> That's absolutely your job, um, which is wonderful because um, a friend of mine uh, sent me the thing and said, they're looking for a marketing manager. Like, do you think they'd be all right if I apply? He's like, yeah, this this is this is your job. I was like, okay. So I did the application um, last December and um, had a number of interviews, like copywriting tests. Um, basically, are you a numpty or can you do the thing in, in a brief set of stuff? Um, and then it was kind of down to a thing where I had the chat with... Um, with Monty and Charles um, and Tammy, and it was kind of like, well, so we're kind of up late and you're in the UK. And I said, I'm rubbish at mornings. <laughs> if, if I don't have to work mornings and I can do something like 11 or midday, I am golden. <laughs> they were like, okay. And I thought, oh, this is, this is going to be the point where I can't get it. And uh, Monty's like, no, no, I, I don't do stuff until later anyway. I was like, Brilliant. So if I need to speak to Monty, I get up early in the morning and uh, and everyone else I'm working sort of midday till um, till 8 p.m. So, yes, I was absolutely so overjoyed when I got the job and it has been brilliant. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful set of people to work with. They are massively supportive. They are hugely talented, incredibly collaborative. And there's so much going on behind the scenes that you just don't see. And it's wonderful. Super, super, super stoked to be here. Thank you. Please let me keep my job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Every time we have like Zoom meetings, because we've met with you through Zoom before, we met with Charles, like these group Zoom meetings. It, it seems like everyone on the call is on a different time zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very much that. And it's, it's weird things as well where, um, I think in terms of dense distance, I think I'm closer to um, to Jennifer than she is to some of the rest of MCG, which is which is just bonkers because we've got that you know honking great big pond in between us, right? Mm -hmm. And yet Jen wakes up a, a couple. Well, Jen's on about an hour, a couple of hours after me, and then sort of the early birds are on. But yeah, it's I think it's about two hours where Monty Cook Games isn't awake. You know, <laughs> we could probably stretch it. So yeah. So part of your job as the marketing manager is taking control of, the, this is a question that a lot of people in our chat were interested in, as well as the, our Facebook group. But uh, part of your job as the marketing manager is taking control of the asset team and organizing MCG's convention presence. Do you plan to make any changes to the asset team? And how is MCG's, or how is MCG going to look in cons in the future? So um, the asset team are absolutely vital to everything that we do with Monty Cook Games. There's a reason that they are an asset. They do ease the difficulty. That's the whole shtick. Um, and there are many, many, many people worldwide, and we're hoping to recruit more as well. One of the major things which we are doing at the moment, and I say we, and I basically had a rant at Jeremy, who does our tech, and about the asset system and what's going on and the fact there's an awful lot of manual process in there. And I don't know where half the people are and things like this. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, we can fix this. So um, he's already rebuilding a system where he's getting things to be able to talk to each other. People will be able to register their shins and then also request those to be into coupons, and it will do that automatically. And what I will do is have a little bit of a change. At the moment, I go through a bunch of systems. It's a little bit manual. Um, that should streamline things and make things better for folks. 
Um, we would very much like more people to come along and GM and demo for us. At the moment, we have an amazing hardcore group of people, but some folks were doing eight, nine, 12 hours of GMing and demoing over Gen Con, especially. Um, and that, I mean, hats off that's absolutely incredible it's also bonkers guys <laughs> we don't want to do this to you we, we want this to be a really good experience so we want to be able to share this out and things and there's so people are so keen and so lovely about it it's like i've got this space missing can you guys run it? it's like yeah yeah of course i'll be in there you know and and you guys as well have absolutely done that for me at gen con and at gang hall con and thank you thank you so much it's, it's massively appreciated and to everyone who GMs and Darius out there. So conventions, we definitely want people to sign up now. And in fact, what we're doing is we're creating a couple of forms. So if you want to go to any of these conventions next year and GM and demo for us, please, please, please sign up. We're going to send it out as a news article. We're going to email everyone who's on that list. If anyone fancies being part of the asset team, I should have given you guys a link to that from the MCG Monte Cook Games site. Um, but that's on there as well. We massively appreciate you and we need you. And also during the year, representing at friendly local game shops at your local conventions and things that we can't get to, please come and be asset team. You are awesome. You're the reason that Monte Cook Games is spreading. You're the reason Cypher System is spreading. And it's massively worthwhile doing it. So, well, yeah. One uh, talent, if you want to join the asset team, the quickest way, you can just go to MCG site right now. The Unless I'm mistaken, you could sign up for the asset team. Yes. On the yeah, team. absolutely. Yeah. Tells you all about it. Um, I'll get a pile of emails tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be one of my things to do and go through and like, yep, yep, this is all good. Let's get everyone in there. And also, CypherCon is coming back, guys, and we, we prefer to go through the asset team as a GM. So if you plan to run on CypherCon next year or yeah, next year, I keep on forgetting it's almost January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next year, you should join the asset team anyway. It's just easier. Uh, it's easier for Kate to figure out all the GMs if, if, if everyone is coming off the asset team. And just so everybody knows, the new CypherCon, you know, CypherCon 2 is going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's going to be wilder. So be there if you want to be a part of this. Because I have to say what Kate was saying about picking up games and stuff like that. I've actually, I love it. I will game, I will run games all weekend. Anthony always has to make me stop running games at conventions because I will run from eight o'clock to midnight every day, you know? So, and it's because it's just that much fun, you know? And it, it makes it easy. So, you know, that being said, too, Kate, Monty Cook Games has recently announced their annual holiday gift for charity program. Can you tell your audience a little bit about this wonder, our audience, about this wonderful project? Yep. So um, the gifting is something that happens every year. And if you go, um, go to the website now, you'll be able to see that you can get $10 now, this is $10 that you can absolutely spend on a Christmas present or holiday present for yourself, um, or you can gift it to a friend, or there are three charities that we're supporting this year. And it was a bit of a bun fight as to which charities and stuff. Everyone had a, a good discussion as to who we're going to choose, why we're going to choose them. Some of these are things that um, some of our uh, staff have actually worked with or for in the past. So it's kind of things that are close to them as well. Um, but you can absolutely donate your $10 to that charity, or you can spend it on yourself, or you can gift it to a friend. And all of these things um, just means it's a little bit of holiday cheer and things, making slightly uh, nicer going into the festive period. So yeah, go go on there, grab your 10 bucks, decide what you want to do with it. It's going to be great. That is so awesome. Do you have to make a purchase to uh, utilize the $10 uh, gift? The donation. So you will, uh, no, if you, if you just want to donate it to the charity, you just tell us and we'll give them 10 bucks. Just that easy. That's so awesome. You know, I just want to throw out there too. So, uh, one of our, uh, one of our viewers said, Ant Lion said, I live that charity thing. I do love MCG social consciousness. So pretty cool. Pretty cool compliment. All right. Um, That's very, very cool. Thank you. Monty Cook Games 
and Cypher Sisters getting a ton of love recently from, you know, whether it's content creators, game designers, and the general gaming community, aka us. <laughs> As the marketing manager of, of a company, how do you plan to keep this momentum going? So this is what's interesting because one of the things universally, because I play Cypher System, I've played Cypher System for a long time, um, but you're not necessarily in the nitty gritty of it beyond, oh, so-and-so has a video, let's look at that, that's cool. Um, oh, this is a Discord, so that's great, let's be past that. But actually going on there and doing the research ahead of doing my interview, everything that was said consistently is what a wonderful, wonderful culture there is within the Cypher Unlimited Discord, within all of the fan base for um, Montecook Games, it is an absolute joy to be able to talk to people, um, to be able to go on to the back of kit pages and answer questions and things. People are lovely. With, with very, very few exceptions, people are not just lovely, they're polite, they're kind, they talk to each other, they answer each other's questions and things. And I think that is absolutely extraordinary. And that's something that is very, very much prevalent for the Cypher Unlimited Discord channel. You know, everyone was here. So I got a couple of people to um, uh, to sign up to you guys. It's like, you've got to join on this. There's, there's loads going on there. You can ask questions, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I said, how did you get on? They're like, oh, no, we, we, we didn't we didn't go back. I was like, well, why not? It's like, oh, I saw the, the tag. There's like 108 messages. It's like, hang on a minute. So I, I wonder in the... There's like numpties. Everyone's waving hello. That's 108 people who are just super excited that you found them and that you're here. Go and talk to them. And they're like, oh, oh, we really speak. I know, no, no, no. We, we have the nicest people. It is joy, absolute joy, this audience. You know, there are, there are other places and other properties where the audience are very challenging <laughs> very interesting you guys you guys just yeah much love huge amount of love for it so how we're gonna yeah how we're gonna keep that going is 100 percent backing you guys and also it's because as a culture as a community culture it's like if someone says something and it's not it's not quite right you go back to them and say hey it's a good thing okay we don't quite use language like that. You're happy to do it. Yeah, they're like, oh, mate, I'm so sorry. Yes. And they amend it and they amend the behavior and it's all great. And that's it. It's it's amazing. It's like living in a giant fluffy picnic. <laughs> Some places out there, they're on fire. I can tell you that now. I've been in corporate side of stuff and phew. Yeah, this there's definitely a lot more toxic communities. It's funny when, when we talk to like we've had Sean on, we have Charles on, Tammy's also said stuff that are very similar. And my reply is always it, it starts at the top, right? If the company itself has like this this standard that they set for behavior and for, for equality, for diversity, for acceptance of all yeah. players, it trickles down to the community. And in the community, just, we just pick up the traits that Monica Games is, is, you know, is handing down to us. So it's MCG's communities are the way they are because of the way MCG is. Your, your guys are like the gold standard when it comes to you know, um, how to run a, a gaming company. Well, the way I look at it is I look at it as a tree. And, you know, Monty, Shauna, Bruce, Sean, they were the initial seeds. And now this massive tree has grown from it. I mean, I met Sean, you know, eight years ago when, you know, Cypher was, you know, still in its kind of its infancy, you know, eight, nine years ago. And, um, he just literally he was so nice, so forthcoming, so helpful, getting me going with the asset team. And it just never stopped, you know? And now they find people like yourself, Kate, who come in and do the same thing. It's a, it's a, I think it's just a, a real life per perpetual motion machine. You know, we talk about it, but yeah, Anthony said it the best, you know, it starts at the top, starts from those roots. And from, yeah. from a biology viewpoint, you accept and you mimic the behavior you see around you. 
So if that behavior is, is good and welcoming and accepting of people, then brilliant, that's what you're gonna pass on. If it's a little bit sideways, means the whole thing ends up being sideways. And, and the whole of Montague Games tries really hard to keep that in everything that we do, in all of our responses to everything, um, in all of the communications, in what we're, we're doing, in the products we're making, everything has to have that at the core of it, um, which, which is amazing. That's a wonderful thing to work for and with. Just to piggyback on the con question, are, are you guys, because I noticed that uh, you're doing a lot more overseas, or uh, overseas for me, for you, you're, you're yeah. under the phone. <laughs> Uh, is that the plan going for? Are you going to add more um, uh, European-based conventions for for our fans overseas as well? So I would like to be able to support um, more conventions uh, in the UK and in Europe. Uh, we there's a big big following in Italy and France for um, uh, for for Cipher and for for Monte no. Games as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, and interestingly, there were um, a pile of Italians came over for um, Dragon Meat um, in London, uh, not last weekend, weekend before, and that was that was quite amazing because the enthusiasm, um, which just seems to be built into these guys. I mean, they they make look me look like some sort of dull mute, <laughs> you know? and it's this wonderful Italian thing waving their hands around and everything's, and they'll get excited and start speaking to you in Italian, which is great. And now that's my new quest for Geolingo is to, is to learn Italian because we have got, got a couple of points. But um, we are going to be able to do, we're doing UK Games Expo um, in 2024, which is the UK's largest um, uh, tabletop games convention. We're also, we did Dragon Meet this year. Um, we might do some others, but at the moment those, that's definitely the commitment on that side of things. But if you have a convention near you and you want to go to it and you want to represent Montecute Games, you want to be part of the asset team, please, please sign up. Just let us know um, and we'll be able to, to give you the shins for your convention work and things like this. And if you need anything from us in terms of resources, let us know. We very, very much want to support what you're doing. That now, sounds that's, that's a perfect segue. You know, all this great stuff you're talking about. So tell me, what's been your favorite experience so far working with MCG? Oh, there's been an awful lot. So um, we did a, we have a summit each year, which is where the whole company get together. And this year's was uh, April in Seattle. And uh, I've never been to Seattle. That was amazing. Um, but it was meeting the team for the first time and we hung out for a whole week and we did a pile of business stuff. But what we suddenly realized is that for a lot of people, this is the first time anyone had met in person, even people who had been there sort of two or three years because of all of the COVID stuff, people hadn't been able to travel. They hadn't got together. They hadn't met people in person. And so there was kind of that thing at the airport where I'm looking around, it's like, and I've got a text going, and Dominique's like, they said they're there. I was like, right, that's cool. And I suddenly thought, I have no idea how tall they are. <laughs> it could be six foot eight or, or like, you know, a little bitty person. But but yeah, they're, they're about my height. That, that's fine. <laughs> and that's the whole trying to identify everyone because everyone's masked up and things still. But um, yeah, that, that was the thing. We spent the time doing it and we actually played... Um, so it's like an icebreaker thing and a team building thing. Uh, we played Taskmaster, where Monty was the Taskmaster and everyone split into groups or individual things in order to do tasks. And some of those were amazing, absolutely bonkers. But that, that, was, that was tremendous. So from a, from a team point of view, very much the summit, meeting everyone, hanging out and, you know, having a voice in what's going on with the company as well. Massively cool. Um, from a from a everybody else point of view, meeting you guys has been freaking awesome just from the very beginning. Absolutely, so so cool. Um, and then bringing that into the conventions and things, and meeting folk at conventions, it's people are just so keen and lovely. It's it's just a joy to be here and to be to be doing those. Um, I think the only thing I'm discovering is being five foot four and off <laughs> is that in America, I am even shorter <laughs> than I am over here. 
And there was a point where we'd done a whole bunch of stuff with the GMs ahead of Gen Con, got on Discord, chatting through adventures, things like that. People ask smart questions, suggest really cool things. Um, and then uh, we've got a little meetup at Gen Con on the Wednesday before. And I'm poshing around. I had to, to talk to somebody about something. And all I heard was, is like, yeah, I can hear Kate, but I can't see her. <laughs> it's like, I mean, they can see me behind where the gondola is. And then I like, felt like a little hobbit walking around the corner. It's like, all right, folks, hello. Yes, yes, just very far away. <laughs> no, no, I learned something. Kate is really good at mimicking American accents. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she so, so this is the thing. Okay. This is the thing that comes up because um because you guys do a short drive, which is eight to ten hours, and it's not a short drive. In in eight to ten hours from where I am now, I can go across five countries, six different currencies, and seven languages. That's that's what ten hours is for me. Okay, and that's not counting the ferry. Right, just anyway. So the short drive, obviously, um, this is a this is an amazing thing because you guys have snacks like we just don't. We we don't have snacks, not like you don't. There's a number of things in the variety of stuff. It's quite mind boggling. Um, but the other thing in that is that there'll be things where they'll take the piss out of me a little bit because of how I say stuff. And there'll be times where they'll say something. I'm just like, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I have no idea what it is. So the car journeys are amazing. So um, we uh, we had Team Girl in our car. <laughs> it just worked out that way. And uh, and so I was trying to order water at a restaurant. You can't order water at a restaurant. I said, watch. And they're like, no, no, no. Next time, next time. I say, okay. So, so please may I have some water? And the waiter's like, what? I said, please, please may I have some water? <laughs> what? Huh? I love huh, by the way. Great, great noise. Um, and I looked at Liv and I said, can I have a bottle of water? And I said, oh, sure. Like, right. See, you see, that's the thing. So I'm learning American and they're learning English and it's lovely. <laughs> Uh, when I first met you, you said, man, you're tall. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is because everyone's my height on the telly, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, hey. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, it's it's very funny. Cool. See, you're know, okay. Now, that means we got to, at least I'm going to try to get over to the UK and then I can practice my British accent. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Be cool. It gets better the more alcohol you have, I'm told. <laughs> well, I don't know, but I'll try. <laughs> you guys recently announced that you're leaving Twitter permanently. So how can yes. your fans keep up, reach or keep up with Monica Games on social media in the future? And I, I believe we That's might be able to help with that a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I love this. Amazing loading questions. Beautiful. Um, so we, as a, as a company, we looked at it, we researched it, and we made the decision that we, we just didn't want to be on Twitter anymore. Uh, we massively appreciate that a pile of our fan base are there, but the, the company, the platform, it neither reflects our company values nor does it do business in a way which we would like to do business. And so we are just leaving a little post up there to see where you can find us. So you can still find us on the usual social media channels with um, Instagram and with Facebook. But we're launching or we have launched Blue Sky. Now, for those of you who don't know, Blue Sky is very much looks like Twitter in the early days. Um, so there's no advertising. <laughs> Uh, you have to, you do have to find your friends, but it's surprisingly easy. Um, so you're looking up people and seeing where they are. The slight bugbear is that you need an invitation for it. And one of these things is, again, that kind of, hey, I think you're cool. You should be on Blue Sky. Come and join us. <clears throat> now, that could prove difficult, except we get a pile of Blue Sky invites all the time. Uh, a whole bunch of other people have. And... Thanks to um, our lovely Cypher Unlimited folks here. We now have a channel. If you want to be on Blue Sky and you want to come follow us and come and chat with us, you can get your Blue Sky link through you guys, which is yep. amazing. Yep, guys, uh, if you haven't already joined the Cypher Unlimited Discord server and you want to uh, get on Blue Sky, follow Monica Games or, or follow Cypher Unlimited, 
We have a channel now set up with, yes, Al, there's about 50 to 60 codes <laughs> waiting for you now that you could go and, and um, you know, there's free codes for you to pick up and you could definitely hop on Blue Sky, follow MCG or follow us. And we, we, we're going to encourage more people. The more people that join, the more people will get codes. So we'll, we'll, we plan to have that site, I mean, that channel open where you where you be able to get a code to invite a friend if you, if you don't have one or if you need one, so yeah, let, let's make a blue sky you know uh, money cook games and cipher system uh, haven. So everybody head over to blue sky. Awesome. So, do you have any other insider information you'd like to share with the Cipher Unlimited community, Kate? Um. So I, uh, I've i got a list next to me of things I'm not allowed to talk about, <laughs> so that I remember not to talk about them. <laughs> had a conversation with Charles this afternoon, he's like, no, can't tell him that yet, no, can't tell him that yet. Um, mm -hmm. However, Knights of Dust and Neon. So after the astonishingly successful um, refunding of Invisible Cube, and enormous love and thank you to everyone who backed that because we we were not expecting that sort of love or that sort of outpouring for the cube and all of its shenanigans um <clears throat> i would like to point out that my cube and the, the bits and pieces that go with it are from the 2008 i do not have any advanced copies we don't have any advanced copies we don't have copies of this one of the reasons is that we would like copies of this that's very cool but um after that finished, uh, we kind of tease a little bit with Knights of Dust and Neon, which is going to be our new crowdfunder. Um, likely to be some setting books in there as well, but yeah, it's it's actually really, really cool. And I can't tell you anything about that, except people have been like workshopping and brainstorming a whole bunch of things in there. Um, and there's all sorts of ideas as to what's going on. And we will be able to tell you more early January so that's it go go to the the Knights of um, Destiny on sign up get notified and we will be able to tell you more early January and then I won't burst from not being able to tell you guys everything Monty's our spoiler guy every time we get him up here he always drops a spoiler too so we, we gotta call Monty and get him back on here because he's got to back on here he's allowed to do that <laughs> yeah. I know even Char Charles was like Monty you weren't supposed to say that and Monty's like eh, whatever <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I know you said you're going to announce it, Jerry. Are we expecting, so are we probably looking at like a March backer kit? Is that fair to say? Uh, probably Without closer the to the end of January. Probably. Oh, even probably. better. <laughs> so, <laughs> but again, it's not set in stone. This is very much a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey sort of thing. So, yeah. That's oh my goodness, the Doctor Who reference is not seen. Now I'm just really having fun here. Thank you. <laughs> so, in a previous life, when I worked to, uh, so I worked for the BBC, uh, freelancing for a little bit, and we were we were digging around in the prop store because we were trying to do a low budget thing. It's always one of those things you're digging around to see what else is in there. And me and my my friend um, moved some like massive bits of carpet and things aside, and then just stopped. Because right in front of us was the TARDIS. And this is before Doctor Who had started again. Right. And that's exactly what we did. And you've got to bear in mind that this is like eight o'clock at night. And with film, you just don't sleep. If you're doing a job, that's the job you do. And then eventually you go home and sleep for two days. And we just looked and I was like, what if this is the real one? He was like, I know! It's like those three little words everyone sentient wants to hear, which is, I'm the doctor. And we just really carefully pushed the door open. And it wasn't, it wasn't, I wouldn't be here if it was, <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was just one of those things you're like, 
all of that kid belief and everything came rushing back when you see the actual thing in person. It was beautiful. Sorry, complete segue. Please continue. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's great. And you said, you know. I grew up on Doctor Who, so I'm with you. You know, John Pertwee was my first doctor. Tom Baker is still my favorite doctor. You know, not to mention, yeah. you know, the newer guys. You know, Christopher Eccleston was beautiful. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, big, big fan of Doctor Who. I have a TARDIS on my shelf somewhere around here. One of many TARDISes. My TARDIS is some... right there. It's right there. Nice. Hey, guys, I'm <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties. I don't know. Uh, Al, C, I mean, uh, Al seemed to have taken care of it, but we might have had a, a quick glitch. Can everyone hear us okay? Thumbs up from the audience. Okay. Uh, everybody. Yeah, everybody says, yeah, they're saying good. We're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, I have, a few, I have a few side screwdrivers around here, too. I want the new nice. one. Did you see? Did you watch the Christmas special yet, Kate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looks wicked. I so, I I if it's over yeah. here before it's over there, I'll make sure you get one <laughs> because, yeah, awesome. All right. Uh, you done, Dean? Yeah, I'm all done. Go ahead. <laughs> so, with the holidays fast approaching, right? I figure we'll throw this little holiday curveball, right? So if you could get a gift for anyone in the world uh, in the world from MCG for the holidays, what gift would that be and who would you gift it to? That's a really interesting question. Uh, so I think I would give the Ryan, so Charles, Tammy and Olivia and uh, and Ren and also probably Jen uh, they'd probably get um, a, a ship, like the good ship Cypher, so they could spend the time over like the um, American Virgin Islands. That would be cool. Uh, oh, but if yeah. I had unlimited rice pudding as a budget, I would, I would have to get a spaceship, and then I'd probably give it to Monty. <laughs> he might invite the rest of us, <laughs> or might just like, bye, come on. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I can imagine when you said ship and you said and you said Charles. I imagine Charles loves naval ships. I imagine he would he would want a, like a a World War Two um, uh, escort or a destroyer class ship. I that would be cool, actually. I I could see him on an old uh, an old style Spanish galleon. You know, just you know, with the hat on and standing there with his foot up like Captain Morgan. <laughs> see, I'd, I'd love that. I um. Uh, my my grandpa was in the uh, the navy, uh, Royal Navy, and so he we went on various bits and pieces. But <clears throat> yeah, HMS Victory down in Portsmouth, um, very very cool. And uh, oh, HMS Warrior, that's what I'd have. She's an ironclad, so right. she's part engine, part sail, and she's beautiful. And she's been afloat for about. 200 years maybe i think they're eventually going to dry dock her but um yeah very very cool definitely them she deserves to sit on the water mm. as, as someone who works on ships i hate to hear the words dry dock <laughs> yeah absolutely no me too <laughs> As um um that's the end of our questions, but we have some really good um audience questions before we go into our world famous rapid fire questions so I'll read the first audience question, and this comes from One Shot Tavern. Demiplane is doing a lot of non-5e systems. Is there a chance of Cypher also selling and offering digital tools via Demiplane at some point? I love Cypher, and it would help me convert so many more players. I'm not sorry. Um... Oh, I'm I've not looked at the plane um, terribly much. Um, as a, a virtual tabletop tool, mm -hmm. I'm assuming this is where it's from. Um, so it is something that we've been looking at, um, not necessarily for Demiplane, but in general. Um, and I think at the moment we're still um, looking to see what is possible, what isn't. Uh, massively appreciate that a lot of people do play online with everything, and we are very aware of that. Um, but I've also written down Demiplane in order to go and have a look at it tomorrow. So 
Thank you for your question. The answer is um, not at the moment, but I now have more research to do, which is wicked. So splendid. Yeah. Thank you. Is actually really nice. It is a really nice um, tool. They have a lot of uh, support for character sheets and the books and so on and so forth. It's it's really a nice uh, a nice setup. I have a few things on Demi Flame. A lot of Pathfinder two stuff. That's very cool. We've um, we've got the Darkest House on the Alchemy platform. So we um, we met them at Gamma, and they produced some really cool and funky cars. And Charles and I were like. Well, how do we get in on this? And they do all the development. So it was very easy to go, hey, here's the darkest house. Why don't you make that one of your stretch goals? They hit it at half a mil. So yeah, really good. So that's going to be coming out at some point. Nice. Awesome. And so our next question yeah. comes from our next question comes from uh, one of our one of our relatively newer members, but all but very active. Zeus Legion asks, when is the line of comics and graphic novels coming? Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that that would also make Monty and the team very happy. We we would we would very much like that as well. <laughs> and the Netflix series or, or Amazon Prime, whatever we're doing, that would that would definitely be it. You know, there's so much out there that's that is kind of adjacent to Numenera and adjacent to the Strange and adjacent to the uh, that could be Cipher System on the telly at the moment, and you're just like. This we should. This should be a definitely a thing. So, <clears throat> yeah, that that would be nice. We would like that too. Yeah, uh, I have a question from Jack One Spade. Uh, this might seem more of a Monty and Shauna question, but I'll ask it anyway. Is I um Jack One Spade's question? If I didn't say it. I love the various settings for the cipher system, but why does it seem like so few of the worlds get expanded on in further books? Predation and Gods of the Fall come to mind as works that they have so much more room to expand on and delve into. I understand Numenera as new places, but they don't feel like part of a greater whole. They feel like adding on an expansion islands like an MMO, MMO. Good, but not united. Sorry for the long question. So essentially, it's no, 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 a good question. We want more setting books. <laughs> yeah, this is a very good question. More support for the settings that exist, really. Yeah. So that, again, is another question that we've been um, talking about as a team. Um, and interestingly, so the Adventures in the Cypher System, which will be coming out um, next year, does add in a number of adventures and bits and pieces and extra stuff for a lot of the existing um, uh, IPs that we have within um, Montecute Games. So that is one of the reasons for doing the Adventures in the Cypher System was to try and get that expansion. Um, I think definitely now we've seen how keen folks are we might look at other stuff as well. A lot of it is just simply development. In We are a company of 12 people. Um, and of those, you have people who are doing design, or people who are doing artwork. We've got our marketing department, our tech, and our support, um, customer support. And that's, that's 12 people. So we run out of time quite quickly to do all of the things that we would like to do. Um, and there's also the point where the designers, it's very much a design-led company. At no point do marketing go to the guys and go, oh, well, we need this game and market research suggests blah. What usually happens is the designers go, I've got this wicked, neat idea. It's this. And we're like, brilliant. Let's, that's, that's great. How do we market that? How do we tell everybody about this? And because it's driven in that fashion, it means that they want to have the new ideas and so on. That's not to say that we won't be putting out support for other um, properties and things. Um, we were very much overwhelmed with, um, with Invisible Sun. Like I said, we were expecting this to be, a, oh, set it live, see how it goes, set it potters on. And instead, it just exploded and was amazing. And then so many people backed it. It was absolutely extraordinary. So knowing that there is that love out there for various things is, is amazing. I absolutely love Predation. Yeah. I think it's a, a terrific thing. It's one of the first. Uh, so <clears throat> one of my chap ran um, a cipher system for his, um, his Sunday group 
and they uh, they're very much the kind of old school gamers and blah 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 and since then um, a number of them especially one in particular thank you Daz for coming to the expo he, he walks up to me and goes I get it I, I get it I was like what's, what's that mate it's like it, it's so easy but it's got complexity it's so it's I get it I was like that's awesome that's truly awesome but they did predation and it was like and you get to have a dinosaur it's like oh they have a dinosaur it's like and that's gonna be played by the person to your left and suddenly you've got these chaps kind of this kind of caca and kind of noise and everyone velociraptoring their way around it's not velociraptor because it's the wrong era for velociraptor i'm using as an example um so yeah that's that, that was wicked just absolutely so cool. I, I love how yeah, they have raptors. That's what they were. I love when you yes, say, yes, um, thank I you. Get it. It's so, it seems so simple, but it's so complex. I think that's a, a lot of players that come to Cypher System, just by like if they'll yeah. briefly go over the rules, they'll be like, oh, this doesn't have any meat to it. But when you put it at the table, it's an entirely different thing. Like, Yes. You know, my my yeah. favorite way to my favorite way to put it to people is that cipher system is simplest it's simple in in execution but elegant. You know, it's just so elegant because like like you are said, we there are layers to it and you can make it a little more complex within the parameters of those rules, not even having yeah. to change a rule or add a rule. It's just the rules that are there that can be, you know, they expand and contract as necessary. So yeah. you read your audience that way your your game suits your players and how they're playing. So we were at the British Library um, last uh, weekend doing get get down get um, excuse me getting my furs worked up um, doing games demos. And one of the things with that is that there were people here who had never ever heard of role playing games which is extraordinary. It's so rare to be able to recruit people like that. Usually, you know, they do some other game or they heard this other thing <clears throat> and they said, hey, what's this? I said, have you heard of role play games? They said, no. They said, have you heard of Dungeons and Dragons? He's like, yeah, it was on the telly. He was like, okay, <laughs> sit down, my lovelies. We are going to learn how to play this and here's what you do. And at the end of it, people go, this is like having a TV show. This is like having your own film. It's like, yes, my sons, yes, it is. Here's how you get started. Um, yeah. But the thing with that is that, because I was, I was doing stealing stories for the devil, which I love. And for a lot of people, I had a very a scenario that I was using and blah, 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 this thing in my head. And each time it played out more or less similar, except for the last guys. So my experience of stealing stories for the devil is that you start off trying to do the cool, sexy James Bond 007. It rapidly turns into the Muppet movie. And, and that's okay. Except this last set, they were 100% 007 Jason Bourne. And it was like, it was, it was quite, I was like, okay, I can't do the usual twist that I want to do here. And I'm going to go with that. But because you can just do that, and you're not like, oh, well, it says on here I have to do this thing in this fashion. It was great. And they were like, this is awesome. How do we get this? I was like, terrific. There you go. So, yes, very elegant. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, next question uh, is from uh, from Jorn, and he says, I'm a big Numenera fan, so I have no trouble finding material to work with in that setting. But in the past, I've had a hard time finding demo materials for other settings without flat out purchasing a bunch of new books. Any plans to open that up more or have they always been hiding somewhere and I just don't know where to look? Oh, bless you. Um, we do have demo materials. One of the things is that we've made this available on our retailers website. Uh, my understanding was that there were kits for the asset team to be able to do this. Um, let me make those more obvious and available somewhere because um, all of our demos run in the same fashion. It can be done in 20 minutes. You can egg it out to an hour and a half, depending on how keen people are. Um, but essentially, you tell them to pick something that's cool. What does it, which character sounds cool? Doesn't matter about any of the rest of the crunch. You're not going to do that yet. Then we do an intro into the setting, which is usually on flashcards. We've all stuff written one side and some lovely artwork. Then we're going to learn the system. And the way we learn the system is we, we climb into, over, or out of something. Because climbing is easy. So now you learn how your skills work. Now you learn how assets work. Now you learn how working together will ease your difficulty each time. 
Then the next bit will be a bit of role playing with a bit of foreshadowing. Again, you can use skills if you've got social skills or sneaky ones. And then the third bit will be a fight. And that's it. And we have these available. Um, I will go back and I'm going to put that down as well. So demo kit. Thank you. This is extremely useful homework for tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, demo kits for the asset team. I will go and make sure that those are obvious somewhere because, yes, that should be very much something that you guys have access to. Offline about providing it on the asset team channel on the Cypher Unlimited Discord. You... Perfect. <laughs> we were more than happy. To be able to, uh, and yeah, I mean, awesome. and, you know, and I like to say that to to those people out there too. Part of the answer to that question is join the asset team. You will find a ton of material to use for just about everything when it comes to the assets. You know that, that you're looking for. Um, like I said, I've been a member of the asset asset team since I I found Sean all those years ago, and it's great. You know, and they're very supportive, and you you'll get you know you get your uh, you get your your worth out of it. I'll put it that way. All right, guys, it's almost like four, it's almost four in the morning for Kate, so we'll we'll ask two more questions, and then we'll go to our world famous ra rapid fire questions. And Jason C asks uh, Shadow Bane, for those that don't know Jason, as any presence at PAX East, this Boston boy is a asking. Do you guys oh, bless you. Um, not at the moment. We're more doing PAX Unplugged because it is specifically sort of games and tabletop gaming. Um, what we're trying to do is get like a, a set of stuff going so that we know exactly what we're doing, when we're doing it. Um, if you're going to PAX East and you want to represent Montecute Games, you want to run stuff, let me know. If you're part of the asset team, which you might well be, then um, sign up. You can get some shins. It relates to dollars on the store, and we will give you what you need to get going. So, uh, not at the moment. Packs, packs unplugged definitely next year. So, this is going to be our last question from the audience, and then we're going to move right into those rapid fire questions. Um, Zeal Zaddy as any other podcast you you guys plan on bringing to the tabletop uh, market after the Magnus Archives? So I can't speak to that at all <laughs> at present. <laughs> That's a thing. There might be things in the future. There might not. Um, I I I am ah, I can plead the fifth at least on your side. <laughs> the lip curl was very telling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm crap at poker, I'm afraid, chaps. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the thing. I had a little shaky lip for a second there. Uh, it was very revealing. She, she I was like, can I tell you? I can't tell you anything. <laughs> I know yeah, nothing. Wanted, I know nothing. She wanted, she wanted to say something. That, that, that that's all it was. She wanted to say something. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Danny also asked another quick question that uh, I'm not sure you could possibly answer, but. Um, they asked, will the settings be, will uh, the other settings be open to third party content? I know the seesaw covers the white books, but it doesn't cover predation, I don't believe, or gods of the fall. So I guess um, they, they so, basically <clears throat> ask that the seesaw ever open up to that. My, my understanding of the way that works, um, and please, please go to the website to look at this properly, is that if you want to create a setting where you might have time traveled back and there are dinosaurs who you are riding around with and might have done tech with it you can probably do that you just can't call it predation same as if you have some crazy weird surreal magical thing that's going on in a crazy city somewhere and you happen to have a book for a head you could do that but you can't call it invisible sun does that make sense? But please, please go to the website and look at it properly. They've got it in plain English there. Um, you just can't use the terms for it. Um, guys, we're so sorry if you asked the question and we didn't get a, a, around to it. We really want to get to our rapid fire questions. And I know it's hella late on the other side of the pond for Kate. So we don't, you know, we don't <laughs> want to take up too much of her time. But Kate, are you ready for this? This is the world famous Cypher so famous. Fire questions. Here's where we dig deep into your soul. <laughs> we, we pull out your essence and we stretch it on the table for the whole world to see. Are you ready oh, for the 
quick rapid fire questions. Drum roll, please. Absolutely. Yes. Question one. Player or GM? Oh, that's so difficult. Uh, I like both, but I'm, I'll am i go for the lazy option and be player. <laughs> Roll punches or TPK? Oh, no. Um, TPK. Yeah. Nice. Online yeah. or in-person gaming? In-person. In-person. I love online. I want in-person. Announce the difficulty or keep it secret. So when I GM, I like keeping it secret. As a player, I want to know, <laughs> which I realize is I don't much do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of both. <laughs> I think I'm in the same boat as that. <laughs> Salty or sweet snacks at the gaming table? Uh, no, see, I'm going to need both. I'm <laughs> very much a hobbit at heart. <laughs> and yeah, both, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> PDFs or physical books? Oh, you forgot one, Dean. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. RP or combat? Um, so role play. But uh, we saw a great video from a lady this morning who said how combat could be role play driven in terms of how you do all of the um, why you're in conflict with each other. So I would be interested to see how that works out and do more of that. So yeah, role play rather than combat. I like combat, but I love roleplay. PDFs or physical books? So I want the physical book, and I read the physical book, but if I'm referencing, I reference PDFs. So again, I'm, I'm going to need both. I'm very greedy. <laughs> the pen and paper or digital notes? Oh... See, I love the notebooks and things. I have, I have a ton of notebooks behind me on stuff. I tend to make digital notes, but in person I make pen and paper. Yeah, pen, pen and paper. Pen and paper. Nice. Pre-written adventures or original content? Oh, I like original content. And yeah. you have survived. The <laughs> rapid fire question. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> but, 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 but your special prize is in the mail. Since you're since in the UK, you'll get it about in a month and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With some crazy shipping attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we distribute out of Devon for that reason. <laughs> it seems entirely fair. Oh dear, amazing chaps. So we here to see you. We here to see you. Just want to say thank you again, uh, Kate, for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Always a pleasure to interact. You know, can't wait to get things figured out. I want to get across the pond now and hang out with you. And you know, and, you know. Yeah, take please a, come over take a, We'll take a short ride in 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 uh, over in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, this is it. I mean, uh, traveling over, it's like my entire kingdom fits into like Kansas and Missouri and most of your states. <laughs> and I don't think people appreciate that. It's really no, digi. Oh, yes, yeah, no, I haven't been to New York. No, oh. I've been, to, I've done. I've been in Chicago, and I went near New York because I flew into it and then flew out again. But yeah, New York is on my list. But I need oh, to put that. I need to practice my forget about it before I get there. You, so you, you plan a trip to New York, and we'll we'll make it fun. You go. We'll go to the city, hang out with Anthony for a while, and then we'll bring you up up north here to meet where I'm at, uh, right at the at the border. Take you to Niagara Falls. You know. Oh wow, and, that'd be amazing. Yeah, me and very, Anthony, very cool. Me and Anthony are only about six hours apart. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's not an only where I'm from. <laughs> that's like a whole stretch of stuff. But it's cool. no, and I'll I'm tell you this thing. <laughs> so I, a lot of people in the rest of the world take the mickey out of the Americans for not having passports. 
But having done Seattle and then gone out to Washington State and then driven in a kind of wiggly bugger way all the way through Oregon, a bit of California into Nevada to go to Gamma, I get it. You guys live in Azeroth. You don't need to go anywhere else. You've, you've got all of these different things. You want to do something new? You drive three hours in one direction. Different food, different accents, completely different flora and fauna. Bored of that, five hours in another direction. Something completely different. It's it's phenomenal. And I, I still can't communicate to people like here yeah, how big it is. Absolutely crazy. It's wonderful. I love it. It's perfect comparison, and everyone chat seems to agree. <laughs> It's fair. A thousand years is not very long for us. A thousand miles is huge. Honestly, I yeah. just want to thank you for everything that you've done for the Cypher Unlimited community, for us in particular, me, Al, and Dean. You have done so much for us, Kate. We, you know, and it doesn't go unnoticed, Kate. Everything you you are a white knight champion and you know, we love you. I just want to thank you for everything that you've done for us personally, and um, you're awesome. And I just wanted wanted you to know that that uh, you know, we we definitely appreciate everything you do for the CU. You know, yeah, you made CyberCon happen, and you know. You, you guys made CypherCon happen. We had a crazy idea, and you actually do it. You are, you guys are a delight. The, the whole channel is a delight, and thank you very, very much. It's my pleasure entirely. So thank you. Um, yeah, anything else you want to tell the audience before I go into my spiel? But thanks again, Kate. We really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you could, you know, we wouldn't complain if you drop any more um, secret <laughs> tips. But anything <laughs> more to you on? I've got a whole bunch of it there. I'm like, Charles is going to review this tomorrow. It's like, really? And, and what, what do we tell them then, Evans? <laughs> it's like, well, I got excited and they're talking about that thing we weren't supposed to mention. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's good. I, I, can, I can say no more. It's going to be a really, really interesting year. Uh, please come and join us as the asset team. Please recruit your friends to Cypher Unlimited. Whenever we go to conventions, whenever we go to shows, we're saying to people, come and join Cypher Unlimited. It's where you play. It's where you can ask questions. It's where you will get the love. It's amazing. So, yeah, very, very cool. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for everything. And if you like us and you like what we do, join the Cypher Unlimited Discord server for all things Monica Games. We have the largest fan-run Discord server for anything MCG. There's games being run, great conversations being had, discussions on every setting. And now you could, if you need a Blue Sky link, you can go over, or head on over to that server and, and get a Blue Sky link and follow them over from the transition from Twitter. But if Discord's not for you, join our Facebook group. It's not as big as our Discord, but there's still great conversations being had there. Um, we really appreciate it if you give us a, a subscription here on Twitch or just follow us for that matter, or go to our YouTube channel. We're really trying to grow our presence there. Like, share, and subscribe there. We really appreciate it if you go over on YouTube and like, share, and subscribe there. Our videos are always free, but if you want to help us out in any way financially, we have a Kofi set up. Just uh, give us a little donation on Kofi. It helps us out with little cool things like setting up CypherCon and a whole bunch of other uh, giveaways like we always do. Or speaking of CypherCon, uh, the Cypher Unlimited shop. Go to our online store and pick up the cool Cypher Unlimited merch. There's only two more weeks left for the CypherCon logos. You know, um, the both CypherCon logo shirts, and then they'll be gone forever, guys. For next year's CypherCon, we'll have a completely different um, art design, probably the same logo, logo, but a different art design. So this will be. There's only two weeks left to get these cool Cypher Unlimited logos. Al's husband did a phenomenal job with this one, and Al did. Uh, artwork one too that was really fantastic so he head on all over head on over to our online store and check that out we really appreciate it did i miss anything now last but not least we love you guys 
Now you hit the nail on the head. Uh, just from here, the voice in the ether. Uh, if you do grab a shirt, definitely grab my husband Leo's design. It's way better than mine, but I will heart you if you grab one of mine. I know a couple people did, and I love y'all for doing mm. that uh, because I know my art is not the best, but I do love doing it. Your uh, art anyways, is awesome. uh, <laughs> thank it's you really all so much yeah. for stopping by. Um, thank you, Kate, for coming on. And uh, as usual, uh, from us at the CU, we will see you later. Have a good night. Bye, guys.